common flaw of curved gaming displays is that they often fail to lean hard enough into the advantages of a curve. In other words, most don't curve hard enough. The Samsung Odyssey Arc is one of the rare few that doesn't suffer from this issue, and at the ideal viewing distance, right around 31 inches, you feel totally enveloped by what's on screen, both with your eyes and your ears. But at the same time, the Odyssey Arc is just too much screen, and the aforementioned ideal viewing distance is just too close to actually enjoy what you're playing for any length of time. It's even more impractical for casual computer use, and becomes downright absurd when converted into its portrait orientation. Samsung succeeded in the goal of enveloping you in the experience. Unfortunately, that experience is generally unpleasant. In order to give you a fully immersive 55-inch curved display, Samsung had to balance that monitor with an extremely heavy stand and hold it all together with weighty parts throughout. I hope you don't plan to move the Arc once you have it set up because it weighs 91 pounds, easily outweighing most average monitors and TVs. All that extra weight is designed to make articulating the Arc very simple once it's in place. The counterweighted stand allows you to easily rotate the Arc between portrait and landscape orientation and up and down to fit your particular setup. The rear of the Arc features two strips of colored LEDs that you control through the TV's settings. These aren't super bright, but in a dark room they do cast a nice glow against an opposing wall. We liked how Samsung chose to route all the connectivity to the Arc through its One Connect box, so the rear of the display is beautifully clean. The One Connect provides optical audio, Ethernet, and four HDMI 2.1 ports in one convenient location that you can stash away under a desk or in a separate control closet, which we really appreciated. What's strange is that the Arc is advertised as a monitor more than a television, but using it and looking at the inputs really puts it squarely in the other camp. This is a television, both in the fact that it doesn't accept DisplayPort, and also in that once it's on and operational, it acts like any of Samsung's other televisions, for better and for worse. The Arc is powered by Tizen, Samsung's operating system for televisions that allows you to install a wide range of streaming apps. This is kinda nice, but really unnecessary for a monitor that's connected to a computer that can access all of those services on its own. Worse, Tizen means that you get another experience that we've come to truly dread about Samsung TVs, Samsung TV+. Samsung absolutely loves to autoplay Samsung TV+, a streaming service that's filled with hundreds of channels of content that you just don't care about. Just about everything is decades old, like ancient episodes of Survivor, Fear Factor, and the Fairly Odd Parents. If the Arc is at any point left idle, or you go and try to fiddle with the settings from the home screen, it immediately plays Samsung TV+, which you can't turn off again until you complete what you're doing or back out. Technically, you can disable Samsung TV+, but it's not the most straightforward process, and we would much rather the company just not make such an invasive feature the standard setting. Another downside of being more television than monitor, the settings that you can adjust on the Arc are particularly meager compared to the competitors, especially if you consider this a gaming monitor. The settings menu lets you adjust things like contrast, brightness, and gamma, but only the bare minimum here. There are also a few preset picture options like standard and vivid, but these are also extremely limited. As it is a Samsung display, the Arc doesn't support Dolby Vision either, so you'll have to make do with HDR10+. The game bar is where you can see information and settings pertaining to your current on-screen gaming content like frame rate, HDR, resolution, and FreeSync. This is, again, identical to all other modern Samsung displays, and we really like it. We think Samsung and LG are the leaders when it comes to on-screen gaming information, and that hasn't changed here. Where the Arc diverges from other displays is how it can work in both landscape and portrait orientations. In landscape, it works just like any other Samsung TV. When you orient it to portrait, it automatically switches to a format that lets you customize what you see in different sectors of the screen. You can set the Arc to operate as one giant vertical display or break that into two or three sections. In order to do this, you have to tell the screen what you want it to do with each slice, which means you have to do the remote to build this out. That experience isn't the most intuitive, but it isn't too hard to get it where you want it after a little fiddling. From a software usability standpoint, this could have been better, and from a hardware usability perspective, we just don't think it's a very good layout to begin with. We tried to use the display like this, both at a standing desk and at a traditional one, but just didn't really vibe with it. It's too big and often required craning your neck to see everything properly. For all its other faults, display quality is rarely an issue with Samsung, and that's no different here. The Odyssey Arc uses a mini LED array that, at least in monitors, is pretty uncommon. It's much more common in TVs, and what we saw here was pretty in line with what we expect from Samsung displays using the technology. Blooming was non-existent thanks to the direct backlighting, and haloing was held to a minimum due to the mini LEDs. 
Because mini LEDs can more directly control on-screen contrast, black levels are pretty great on the Arc, though they're not as exceptional as you'd get with OLEDs. Samsung promises a typical brightness of 600 nits that will peak as high as 1000 and we definitely notice the advantage of that level of brightness. This display is perfectly able to handle lighting conditions in any time of day and at night we actually found we had to turn it down a bit. As far as color accuracy goes, Samsung promises up to 95% coverage of the DCI P3 color gamut, but we are only able to verify it to 90.2%. It also hit 99.4% of sRGB and 78.9% of Adobe RGB with an average Delta E of 4.12. These aren't great numbers when viewed without context, but you have to consider this is a 4K gaming display capable of 165 Hertz and it's curved. With that in mind, that's pretty impressive. Even more so is the screen uniformity, which with a few minor exceptions on the left side was really nice. We're expecting a lot poorer results here because of the extreme curve, but we came away pleasantly surprised. HDR gaming looks exceptionally good and both Destiny 2 and Apex Legends look fantastic with on-screen content popping off the screen and responding quickly to input commands. Horizon Forbidden West also looked fantastic with night scenes especially showing off the panel's great dynamic range. This is a very nice gaming display and it even puts in work for movies and TV, but the viewing experience of those just isn't great with a computer. If you're going to own an ARC, we think there's some expectation that you're going to be able to use it for more than just gaming, since it's going to be dominating any space that you put it in, and from that perspective, we weren't really fans. The sheer size and recommended viewing distance make pixels appear not especially sharp. Even with this much resolution, looking at a screen that close just isn't ideal. The Samsung Odyssey Arc is a striking display that looks outstanding on paper, but in practice, it's just too much screen that's meant to be viewed too closely, and it doesn't properly balance between being a television or a monitor. It's nice for playing games, and it's usable for watching TV or movies if you don't mind sitting at a desk instead of on a couch, but using it as a regular PC monitor just isn't a good experience. For more on the latest tech reviews, make sure you are following and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch.